Hello, Adam Gordon here, nexedex.com. Today I've got a couple of studies for you from PwC in terms of artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things with some educational implications that I'm drawing. This is the first one, leveraging upcoming disruptions from AI and IoT. And the other one that I want to talk about is the bot.me study. Bot.me, a revolutionary partnership. We'll come back to that in a second. So, just so you know, the the studies and related activity in this area is available here at pwc.com consumer intelligence series just by the way there's more wider stuff to do with foresight uh, in terms of smart home or automotive futures empowering cities esports work life various things good stuff to be found on the site but moving to the topic at hand, upcoming disruptions from AI and IoT, I wanted to take you to this chart, which I think is a very decent summary of the driving forces uh, behind the, uh, the emergence of and, and collaborations of these technologies as they reinforce each other. Uh, the first one being we would recognize this Moore's law, decreasing cost of CPU memory storage, then convergence of IT and ops, operational technologies, which has been going on for quite a while and continues, uh, advent of big data, data collection, and distributed storage in the cloud and access uh, in the cloud, increasing device proliferation. That's not just mobile telephony and iPads and so on. It's it's also obviously Internet of Things. It's it's all devices. Decreasing cost of communications uh, and and increasing ability and reliability of communications as well. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, the increase in investment spending, venture capital, uh, and other forms of of investment that are coming into these technologies and rapidly enabling them. So I've written a fair amount about drivers and their relationship with enablers and friction and blockers and if you'd like any more on the theory on that please do be in touch. Uh, but suffice to say here there are a lot of strong drivers and not a lot of brakes on this except for the fact and this is the next the slide that I want to show you, except for the fact that um, there may be a, and there will be a, with, I think without a doubt, a huge political issue as to where these jobs go that are going, that are going to move into the artificial intelligence space. Because the argument here is that uh, so called quote unquote low value roles and jobs, the kind of thing that are repetitive, that will and I think there's no doubt, will move into the province of artificial intelligence and robotics or some combination of the two. Uh, as that happens, the argument is that more and more people will move into higher value functions in terms of more complex tasks or dealing with innovation, or creativity or strategy, uh, so on and so forth. The, obviously, the issue is how many people make that transition or what happens to anyone else. But the fact that this is going on and that the technology will be able to uh, fulfill these uh, everyday functions, I think, is unassailable. So that leads me to the next study that I wanted to show you. And if I can bring you down to this chart. Now, here's a this is a consumer survey. So that's where this comes from. PwC surveying the general population, asking them in the next five years how likely is it people will turn to artificial assist, assistance in these for these various roles and jobs. And what's interesting here, I think, is is uh, is remarkable. In fact, is that tutoring comes up right at the top of this list. Tutoring is seen as the most likely or the most vulnerable, depending how you how you choose to see this. That is obviously not high-level academic teaching function or researching, but the, as it were, day-to-day -day job of marching students through learning the basic skills in whatever area they need to learn in. Uh, 
And I think if you add this all together, you add the, the way consumers are thinking about this in terms of what they're expecting and likely to adopt, and you look at the technologies that are pushing this along, it looks to me like tutoring is certainly in the short term, zero to three years, maybe a little longer, the sweet spot here for educational innovation. Uh, large businesses to be created in managing uh, and spreading and scaling the tutoring function in education. I'm Adam Gordon, nexodex.com, attending to developments in ed tech and learning innovation and the challenges not only for educators but also for planners and investors. Thanks for watching. See you next time.